Thanks everyone so much for coming to our formatting your New Hampshire SAS results um, in Excel. This is a webinar for those of you who are in that beginner intermediate, you know, kind of category for, for your Excel skills. Uh, so excited to be here with you today. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank the New Hampshire uh, Education Department. It, without them, we wouldn't be able to give you these webinars um, for free. Um, so we love our partnership with them. Um, everyone is muted, just so you know. So if you have any questions, you can enter them into the Q&A section um, of our Zoom screen. And we'll be able to uh, feed those questions to each other, uh, myself with my colleague Heather Jenkins here, and, and so forth. And you can use the chat as well if that works for you. Just so you know, about 24 to 48 hours after this webinar, um, you will receive a link to the PD certificate. You will get a video of this webinar, the Google slide deck of the webinar, the PowerPoint, um, and any other documents that go along. So we do have a few documents that go along with this, this PowerPoint today, so you'll get access to those as well. And uh, lastly, there will be a brief survey once you close out of the webinar. Um, your feedback is always appreciated. And um, we, we look forward to reading it and, you know, improving in any way we can. <clears throat> so my name is Marissa Hooper. Um, I, I work for Demonstrated Success. Um, I'm also here with my colleague, Heather Jenkins. Hello, everyone. Um, she works for Demonstrated Success as well. Um, and then Kristen Crawford is not here, but we uh, love to add her as, as a contact person. Her information will be at the end in case you have any questions um, about anything related to assessment, you know, anything like that. She can, she can help you out. Our essential understandings for today, um, we, we basically want to answer, be able to answer these, these questions. What are the basics of Excel? How am I going to enter data in an Excel uh, spreadsheet? How will I then format those Excel, excuse me, Excel spreadsheets? And also how we can use those Excel spreadsheets and use basic formulas within those spreadsheets to calculate data for, for our New Hampshire SAS. All right. I'll take it over from here. Thanks, Marissa. Um, again, we appreciate everybody joining today. Um, this is a webinar that we've done um, a few times in the past, um, and um, it's been super helpful for folks who are um, looking to kind of really delve into Excel. One thing I do want to say is that even though we're working specifically with Excel today, everything that we're talking about um, has the same functionality in um, Google Sheets. So if you are a school or district that just uses primarily Google, um, we'll be able to, um, everything that we're showing you today is gonna be um, pretty similar to um, Google Sheets. It's just that the screen is not set up exactly the same way, but um, it's not like any of the formulas or the functionality that we're going to show you today isn't available there. So they're kind of um, go hand in hand. One thing I will tell you is that I feel like Excel goes really well into Google Sheets. Like you can move your data from Excel into Google Sheets and it's pretty um, easy to do that. However, if you create something in Google Sheets and you try to get it into Excel or open it up in Excel, it doesn't work quite as nicely the same way. So if you're using both, just know um, that um, if, you're, if you're doing all this formatting and everything in Excel, you're probably going to want to print it in Excel or you're going to want to upload it to Google and do everything with it because the formatting gets a little funky. I'm also going to turn off um, my video so that you have a little bit more of your screen to see. Because this is a webinar that is for anybody who's super beginner to somewhat intermediate, wanted to go over um, first and foremost the Excel basics. Um, then um, I want to talk a little bit about spreadsheet formatting, printing, and all of that with New Hampshire SAS data. We're going to use modular data today um, just for you to, to see, but this could be any piece of data um, that you're looking at that's related to the assessment or even to um, other um, assessments that you might have 
um, in spreadsheet form. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about some of the commands um, and formula guides, um, and then we're gonna wrap up and answer any additional questions. This is one of those webinars. If you have a question, um, try to um, put it in the Q&A or the chat. Marissa is gonna be going over that um, as we go through. So um, if you need me to stop at any point and retell you what I've said, um, or if something was confusing, let me know. Also, with that being said, know that you are going to get a full recording of this that you can watch as many times as you would like. Um, so if it's not something that's super essential, um, then know that you're going to be able to, to take a peek at it again. We'll give you the link to it and everything when you get that follow-up email. Go. So this in general is your Excel window. I want to show you and give you, at any time I do webinars like this, I kind of give you a little bit of a user guide. So um, just to kind of tell you the layout of this particular screen, first things first, we have your title bar. So this is telling you what the title of this particular, um, they call them Excel books or the actual file name is. You have your toolbars um, along um, the left-hand side here. This is the main toolbar um, that you have um, that will be um, showing as soon as you get into Excel. You have what are called column headings. So your columns are all the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it goes on to A, 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 B, A, C. It, can, it goes on and on and on and on. And then the same thing with your row headings, your rows go from one all the way down to however many rows of data that you may have. This um, top left um, where it says A1 right now, this is the cell name for what you have that's um, clicked on um, at this point or selected. So this is A1. If I were to click here, it'd be B1. This would be B2. And then after that, you have your formula bar. That doesn't mean there has to be a formula in there. It could be a number, it could be a word, it could be words, it could be lots of different things in there, but it's called a formula bar. So sometimes when you're um, making changes to what is in there and trying to update things, you can either click in here and type, or you can click on this once the cell is, um, selected and you can add a space if there was a space missing or take a space out, whatever you would like to do. So you can work with um, within the formula bar as well. This right here is the cell. That's why this one's called the cell name box. Makes sense. Um, and then this is the whole thing here is your worksheet window. We want to make sure that you understand that Excel has the ability to have multiple worksheets within one file or one quote unquote book. So you've got your worksheet tabs on the bottom. Um, this is something that when we run data for folks or when we talk about things, there tends to be multiple tabs and people can't find the data because they're not necessarily on the correct sheet. Um, so there's um, sheets that you can um, create. So you can have multiple sheets. If we were doing an advanced class, you can have one sheet, look at another sheet um, to be able to, to do something um, within your, the sheets in there. So you could say, I want to see if there's multiple years, I would be able to pull from multiple years and show everything on a single sheet. Um, we're not going to get quite into that today, but um, that's um, really sort of the premise around why there's multiple sheets there, or they could be multiple grade levels, multiple teachers, right? You might have a certain amount of data and you might want data separated out into grade level or into section level or teacher level. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. This here is the Zoom slider. So in Excel, it's not like um, Google where you hit like your control or command plus and minus to make it bigger or smaller. There's this Zoom slider down on the bottom that will help it um, so that things aren't looking microscopic if you're like me and you need things to look a little bit larger on your screen. 
On the um, left of that, you've got some view buttons. So you're able to view things um, in a little bit different way. We can talk about the different views um, that you're going to see, but um, this will allow you to see it um, either in a preview mode or um, in um, sort of a, a sort of cell by cell um, type of mode where you're able to put in page breaks and all of that kind of stuff. So if we look at this for your title bar, obviously this is gonna display the name of your spreadsheet or workbook. That's why it's book two, book one, whatever that is. Your toolbars down on the bottom here. This is um, where you're able to um, kind of open things up a little bit. So the menu bar displays menu. Um, so this here, like I said, is the one that defaults. This is your home um, one. There's also, if you click on insert, there's a different menu for menu bar for insert, um, a different toolbar for drawing, page layout formulas, all of that. So um, the um, actual toolbar is going to change depending on what you have selected on your menu bar up at the top. So a lot of times people are looking through and they're saying, okay, I'm trying to um, add something in, or I'm trying to, um, undo something. Um, we want to figure out where I can do that. Um, it might be on a, a different toolbar. So we tend to kind of click through the toolbars to kind of see, um, what we need to find today. We're going to stay mostly on that home toolbar. Um, but there's definitely other options there too. When it comes to column headings, um, an Excel spreadsheet can have 256 columns. Um, and then obviously it's got those letter combinations with it. The rows, you're able to have up to 65,000 rows and each one has a number. And then you've got your cell name um, and um, the cell that you have active or selected. And then you have the formula bar. Again, whatever is in that cell will be shown in your formula bar. When we look at a cell right now, again, we're looking, um, each cell has its own kind of quote unquote address. So we're looking at D4 right now. And then again, you're looking at the tabs. Um, you have um, specific worksheets that you can do or kind of like a new page um, are each in their own sheet. The zoom slider here, again, this is where we can go in and we can say we need to see things a little bit bigger. That's the viewing area that's on your screen. These view buttons, so this is the normal view. This would be a page layout view. And this is what I was talking about if you wanted to insert a page break um, on a specific sheet. And you say, okay, well, I need this um, to cut off here. And I wanna you know, show the, the um, cells that I have up at the top on the next page. That's where you're kind of doing those types of things. As we look at um, the um, Excel window here, we're looking at your standard formatting. Again, we're on that home button here. Um, and then the next one is, oh, this is where we're gonna be spending quite a bit of our time. We might be spending some time on showing the number here. We've got some formatting that we're going to be doing, but this is where we do all the things that we would do in um, Word or um, uh, uh, Google, um, Google Docs, my goodness, um, Google Docs. So this is where all that formatting is gonna come into play. Any questions about the general information that we have so far. It's pretty pretty self-explanatory, but definitely um, put anything in um, if you have any questions. So the next thing I wanna talk about is being able to um, do any sort of formatting or printing or um, anything in Excel. So here's what we have um, for some um, data within um, the New Hampshire SAS portal. This is just happens to be um, data that is uh, modular data. Um, and when it comes, um, when we download it, it looks exactly like this. This can be super helpful, um, but this can also be overwhelming to be able to see all of this information um, and to be able to kind of weed through it. 
A lot of times when we have any sort of, whether it be New Hampshire SAS or whether it be from any other um, program that you might have where you're able to download results, a lot of times they give you everything and you have to kind of weed through that to make it manageable and to make it understandable for yourself and for possibly those on your team that are looking at the data. So this is what it looks like when you download it. And what we're going to walk through um, for the next bit of time is um, getting it to look like this. And so this is something that is a little bit easier to understand and a little bit more self-explanatory and might be a little bit for, more useful to us. So what I'm going to do is um, at this point, I'm going to go live into Excel. I'm gonna actually open up um, the Excel um, spreadsheet that is a raw download. Um, I realize that not all of you are here um, necessarily to see New Hampshire SAS information. You're really here to learn about Excel. But in the past, people have asked where I'm actually getting this type of data. How do you download modular data? So I just wanted to show you really quickly. Um, you have to have access um, to the um the Cambium portal. So teachers, um, school um, administrators, all of those folks, if you're an LEA, then you might um, already have access. But under test administration on the Cambium portal, so um, those of you who are um, using it would know how to get here, you're going into reporting. You wouldn't have to um, do any of this here. We have a demo district, so I'm just going to show you um, that information because um, it's a little bit um, tricky to um, go into any other specific information here. But if we were going into um, an ELA benchmark or a math benchmark, whatever it is, we're going to click on that. And these are the modulars. They're called benchmarks in the system. And then if I wanted to download any modular information, I'm going to click on that modular. I'm going to click um, on, if I don't see the students, I'm going to say performance by students. Again, this is a demo database, so there's not much. But I'm just going to click on this features and tools. I'm going to click print. And then I'm going to hit save to Excel. I love color and all of that, but the PDFs for this are not really um, as helpful as you can see, even on the right hand side, it's not a lot of information going on. There's more pages. Um, if I click back to save to PDF, I should be able to scroll down for some reason. Oh, it's giving me summary only. I wanna hit summary and item scores. Make sure you choose summary and item scores. And then it's giving me all of that, but you can see it kind of goes down onto multiple lines. So I want to save to Excel. I know I'm going quickly with this, but um, you'll have the recording and then you can confirm. And what it will do is it will put this information um, in your secure file area and you can just click on recent. And once there, it's not, um, you know, waiting, um, you can click on this and it will automatically download this and put it in my downloads and I can open it from here. So I would be able to open that and I would be able to see the general information um, that I have here. For right now, I don't want to work with this particular data because I would like to do a little bit more with student information. We changed, um, obviously, any student names here so that um, you can, um, we just de-identified the data basically. So anytime you have this data, it gives you a lot of information that you don't necessarily need. First things first, we don't need to have this whole information up here. I like to just um, put the math grade four, right? And then I might just say, I want this one's the numbers and operations um, fractions A. So I didn't delete that. All I'm doing is clicking in this tab and then anything that I don't want, I'm clicking and dragging and deleting. And then to, to say, this is what I want for this, I'm just hitting my return. And that is, um, making it so that this is just that one area. As soon as I hit return, it's bringing me to A2 here, and it's bringing me into that particular cell and telling me what that is. You can see I'm in A2. 
A lot of this information is going to be helpful, but I'll tell you, this does not format in the way that I find um, super helpful. Um, a lot of times when we're looking at any sort of data, we want to know which questions students are doing well on, which they're not doing as well on. I like that the New Hampshire SAS gives you the approaching low on or above, but in the grand scheme of things, things like their scaled score, things like their approaching low or on or above don't, um, don't necessarily mean as much to me. And the same thing with the performance counts. I do want to see how students are scoring. And that's what this information is here. All these ones, twos, and zeros. Um, that's telling me what the students scored for a particular question. So I do want that information. For me, again, you could keep anything you wanted in here, but for me, I'm going to delete A, this A2. So I just clicked on the actual row here and it gives me this little arrow. I click here and I actually want to delete all the way down um, to A12. Couple different ways I can do that. I can click here and then I can, I, I just, I have nothing, um, held down on my keyboard or anything at this point. But now if I want it all the way down to A12, I'm gonna hit my shift key and click with my mouse. And now it's um, selected every single one of those rows. You wanna select, if you're gonna get rid of a row, you wanna select the whole thing. So you wanna make sure that you're in that row area here where these numbers are. If I say, I just wanna select this, and I wanna just get rid of the data that's in here all the way down to here, it won't actually move those cells up the way that I want them to. So I delete the whole row. So again, I click in here. I can also click, hold and drag all the way down to row 12. And then a lot of people like to hit their delete button, but what happens when I hit delete is all it does is delete what's in the cells. It's not actually deleting what um, that row is. So I actually want to, again, with my cursor over here on the left-hand side where their numbers are, I want to right click with my mouse and choose delete. And now what's happened is that brings things all the way up to the top. I got rid of all of those extra um, rows that I needed, and now I'm getting into the information that I really want from each particular student. As I'm looking at this, I'm also seeing a lot of not just rows that I wanna get rid of, but columns. I don't want anything with my student ID on it. Um, you know, I mean, the student names would technically be here. I just don't like anything to have a student ID on it. Um, we put all of these as the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but every student has um, within um, the state of New Hampshire, unique IDs specifically for the student and then also for the New Hampshire SAS testing. And I just, I wanna get rid of that. So I can delete one column at a time, or I can look at this and I can say, I would also like to get rid of the scaled score here. That particular score is how um, this performance is figured out. So the scaled score being um, a 455 would put somebody in approaching, looks like 475 is still within that range. This plus or minus is like a standard deviation, which means it could go anywhere um, from 455 plus 18 points or minus 18 points. This one here, you can see this student's standard deviation, that's the highest I've seen in a while. Um, and that is just because these students are not doing well at all on the assessment. So um, the next time they took it, it would be possibly um, within a range that is 163 below this or above this. I'm going to right now get rid of all the columns that have the student ID all the way to this item number max points and standards. So again, I go up to the top because I want to delete the column, getting that little down arrow. So I can click that. I've now selected row um, or column B. I can hit my shift key and I can go all the way to column E and it gets rid of, it's basically selecting all four of those columns or 
I could click on B, hold, and drag all the way to column E. Again, we don't want to necessarily use the delete key. Um, we want to right click here and we want to choose delete so that it actually deletes those particular um, columns. So now I have those student name, I have this empty max um, points um, scored and, and all of that. I'm going to deal with that in just a little bit. One thing that the New Hampshire SAS modular assessments also do is they give you the items that the student, student scored the best on, the five items they scored the best on, and the five items they performed the worst on. As long as there's um, 10 um, points total or 10 questions total, it will give you these extra columns. I want to just work with the total items, one through 10. I don't I, I'm going to um, do some things with my formulas that are going to help me understand where students are doing well and where they aren't. So again, I'm going to click here and I'm going to get rid of these rows because they're duplicates of what I'm seeing over here with the one through 10. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose delete. So now I've been able to delete all of the um, columns and all of the rows. I'm gonna make this just a smidge bigger here so that we can see it a little bit better. Um, and now I wanna start getting um, a little bit um, to taking out some of the um, color that I have here, putting in um, some, changing the direction of some things and getting some formulas in here. Um, so right now, um, what I'm going to work with first is I am going to um, add a row here that's um, where this has student here and the specific standard associated with it. I actually want the row in between that and student one. So a couple of different things I can do because I'm adding a row. I want to go to those numbers on the left hand side and I'm going to right click. For this one, I want to say um, insert, and then what's going to happen is, it's interesting, I think it's going to go above it. So I'm actually going to click on row six, right click and choose insert. Just so you know, in Google, when you right click and it says insert, it will say insert row above or insert row below. Um, so um, with Excel, it's always picking um, the row um, that is um, that you have and putting a row above it when you say insert. So I want this inserted here because um, at some point I want to put in here the correct answer frequency. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I don't love the way that it's formatted. I don't like the fact that it's coming out here. Um, so I'm going to do some things with formatting. Um, one of them is to say where I want um, the um, specific um, text to be. And if I want it to be um, formatted for left alignment, um, middle or right alignment. This one here, I'm just going to say I want right so that it kind of gets out of my way here. Um, for me to be able to do some things over um, to the right here. Some other basic things. Um, if I did not want these, um, anything in here or specific things to be bolded, um, you just, just like you would in Word or anything else, I could unbold it. Um, also, um, on a Mac, it's sort of your command. It's command B. It will bold it. Or you can, if you want to unbold it, it's Command B again or Control B, um, depending on your particular um, type of computer. So now I have the row that I want in here. Um, I'm always looking to um, be able to print things in a really nice and easy way, um, and so that they're on a single page. I know as we look at modular data, if I were to um, print this right now, it's going on to a couple of different pages because the columns are too wide. I just hit control P or I could have gone to um, here and I could have gone up here to file and print here. 
So I want to change the text direction of my standards. I don't want to do it one at a time. I want to do them all together. So I'm going to click this and then I'm going to click and drag over here. Another way to also click and drag um, is if I click in this particular um, cell, I can hold down my shift key and I can use my, there's um, a little um, arrow pad where it's got up and down, left and right. I can hit my right arrow and just move them down. I can continue down this way or across. I can, can keep going. So as long as I'm holding down my shift key, sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes people click and drag and they're like, oh, I'm dragging stuff and things put things go all over the place. So sometimes it's nice to use your shift key and your arrows um, to be able to do that. This I do not want to be um, um, left to right. I don't want it to be horizontal. I actually want it to be vertical. So what I'm going to do is up on the top here, I've got my home button and this is my formatting. This here is the text direction. If I click here, I can say the way that I like it. This just happens to be the way that I like it where um, the line is here and you're kind of tilting your head to the left maybe. Um, I think that's a pretty standard way um, to look at it. And so now I have a little bit more space in each one of my columns to be able to make things fit onto one page. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about fitting on one page right now. I just wanted to show you the text direction there. As we're kind of going through this and we're looking, um, these are the scores for, for students. Right now we can see here, we had 10 questions on this particular assessment. The max points, so for the New Hampshire SAS modulars, and even um, for a lot of folks that are entering data um, from whatever assessment that you're doing, maybe you're hand putting in data um, for your math assessments or your ELA assessments, social study, whatever it is, um, you might have certain questions that have more than one point value to them. So um, I wanna talk a little bit about figuring out formulas when um, you have items that are worth more than one point. Um, it changes things a little bit um, to have multiple points for one particular, um, uh, for a particular question. So I wanna talk about that. Okay, so when we're looking here, even though there's 10 questions, there's more than 10 points on an assessment. The easiest way, for me to be able to think about this and to calculate it, this is pretty easy. I can look at this and I can say, okay, I've got two questions that are worth two points, the rest are worth one, and I can do the math in my head, but it's not always that easy. Sometimes we have 20 questions, some of them are worth three points, some are worth two, some are worth one. So the way that I calculate the maximum number of points on an assessment is I click over to the right here, and any time we're trying to add things up, we're looking at a formula that is going to be called a sum. So when we look at, when we're doing formulas and we're trying to add um, things in, we uh, um, can go to our formulas area here if you'd like. So these are some of the um, general formulas that we have. So there's an auto sum that just basically says it's going to, um, if I click on this, <clears throat> it finds all the numbers there and it says sum, and then I just hit return. And I know that there's 12 points um, for you know adding these up. This particular um, formula can also be typed in. So if you start to get um, good with your formulas, like I know for sum, it's equals sum, and then I have, it starts to come with some of my formulas here. I can click sum here and now it opens this up. What that means is it wants me to select the cells that I'm going to do this for. You can select them left to right, um, right to left, whatever you would like. So I'm gonna say, I want all of these cells to be in that. I clicked and dragged and now I'm hitting return. Answer is 12. So sometimes auto sum doesn't work as well because you might have other things in the way, um, but that's the way that the formula is going for um, the sum. What it does is it says it's taking basically cell C4, so 
This is cell C4 and it's adding cell C4 all the way up to C uh, or to L4 and coming up with this number. That's what the um, information is here. And you've got your colon in the middle of those. So now I know that this is 12 points. To be able to figure out what students are um, scoring and how well they're doing on the assessment, I can't, because this is more than one point, I can't just say, give me the average for the student. Um, for those of you who aren't math people, you know, I don't know if you need to be a math pe person actually, but um, they have to all be worth the same amount of points for you to be able to figure out an average. So for figuring out an average now, what I want to do is for every student, I want to say, I want to to get a sum for the total number of points that they have. So for this, I'm doing the same thing. Student one, I'm going to say equals sum. And again, I can choose this or I can just say, I know that this is it. And I'm going to say, I want to know what this particular student scored. And they scored a six. Well, I have 30 students. I don't want to do this formula all, you know, like for everybody. So the cool thing with Excel is if you're doing something simple, like um, doing like the sum of something or even an average, this little box here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it better on your screen. As this is um, selected, I have um, my cell selected. There's this little um, area down here that's like a square. And then when I put my cursor over it, it's a plus. And what I can do is I can click and drag that all the way down to the end and let go. And now what it did was it put in the information for everybody's score. So now I can know how many points um, these particular students got. However, this is not giving me any sort of percentage. It's not telling me what percent these students um, scored. So now to be able to figure out how they've scored, what I need to do with this is I have my sum. And then what I need to do is divide by that 12 because that's my total number of points, right? So I can click in here and then to divide, it is um, kind of probably what you might think it is, which is the slash um, divide key. And then I'm gonna choose 12. And then now I have that they, um, a, a basically a decimal for what they scored. Again, I'm not sure I really want a decimal. So now if I go um, here and I go back to my home screen, I can see here, that I've got some ways in which I can format things and I want it to actually be a percent. So now my decimal is turned into a percent. I want everybody's to look this way. I didn't have to click and drag this down. I just wanted to show you how that worked. I can now click and drag this um, particular formula all the way down to the bottom here as well. And now I know the information for how each particular student scored. So now I've got my um, correct answer frequency here for the students. And so I can see who um, is doing really well and who's having a hard time. We, we do that all the time. We say, okay, we've got our lowest students. We're going to work with our lowest students. We've got our higher students. And we start to figure out sort of our groupings from that. But I also really like the information about how students are scoring on particular questions because a certain question might be bringing a lot of student scores down and I might be able to look at that and say, okay, let me figure out what um, is going on with students because they're not totally understanding this particular question. So the first thing I'm going to do here is this correct answer frequency I'm gonna do for each item. So I want to see how they scored on each particular question on the assessment. I find this to be some of the most important information that you can get off of any assessment, not just the modulars. The modulars gave me a little bit of this information and I deleted it at the top and I'm going to kind of show you why here. So to be able to figure out how students scored, typically what we're going to be doing is an average. So I can go back to my formula bar 
and I can take a look here and I can try to find um, my um, one that has like a specific average. Um, and I know here as we're looking, I can also go to, um, sorry, up here to um, our, where is it up at the top? I don't even know if you can see my um, screen. But if I look here and I'm um, insert, I can say insert um, a function. And this gives me all of my formula builders here. So if we're looking at average, I can click on average here and it's telling me um, how to basically put in my average information. So for average, I know anytime I'm putting in a formula, it's going to be add. <laughs> Okay, A, B, E, and then I'm going to choose average. And then again, clicking and dragging down for those that I want to actually use and hitting my return. Return. I don't know why it's not doing that. So I'm going to do it myself here and put in the end. So now, again, I can look at this and I can say, okay, now I'm at a decimal. I can go back to my home screen here. And I can say, I want to use percent. So students, it looks like scored an 87% on this. I'm going to just table that for just a second. And I'm going to say, I want to see this same thing. So again, I did average. I'm going to show it to you one more time because for some reason it was being funny there. And so I could say equals and then average. And then I'm going to click down drag and return. And so now I have this again, I can change this to a percent. I don't want to have to do this for everyone. So again, I'm looking in here, I'm going to click and drag to the right. And now I've got my percentages for each um, one of my questions. The problem with this is that this is an an average, but there's some that are two points. So this works perfectly for something that is a single point. But if you're two or three points, kids are not getting a hundred on this. There's kids that are getting none. There's kids that are getting one. There's some that are getting both points. So it's not really telling me how students are doing on those two points. So anything that's worth more than one point, if we were to do an average, we have to divide by the total number of points. And so this is really a 43%. I know I clicked and dragged that. It only does that for this one. This one's still just the regular. And then here I can go in and I can say divide by two. If it was by three, I can say by three. And so now this changes a little bit. This here is correct answer frequency because these are only worth one point. It becomes a little bit fuzzy when we have two points, three points, or what have you. So now this changes to it's not 43% of the um, answers were correct or 43% of the class got it correct. It's 43% of the possible points were scored correctly, which I know kind of is kind of blows people's minds sometimes when I'm talking about it that way, but you can easily see this. This kid got a hundred percent on this particular question. This student got some points off. He got one point off or she got one point off. This one didn't score any points for this. So you can see it's variable here for where um, students are scoring. So out of all the points that could be scored, 43% of the points were scored um, out of that. Same thing with this one because it was two points. This 7% of students got this particular question correct. This one here, 7% of students. I love looking at this particular information because this is telling me this isn't just a few kids. This is pretty much all kids are getting these particular questions incorrect. So I want to look into that um, and, and see what are the possibilities for why that that's happening. As I'm looking through this and going um, um, looking at everything. I don't need this 12 anymore, so I'm going to delete it. I don't want it to print either, so I want to get rid of things in that column. I don't love the way that this looks um, here, so there's a couple different things I can do. If I want to select everything and say I want to modify everything and take 
all formatting off or change all formatting. I can do that by clicking way up here um, on this little like X that's like a, the, the triangular here and it selects my whole sheet. And what I wanna do on my whole sheet is I wanna say, I don't want any borders right now because I wanna put in my own borders, okay? I might say for this, I wanna get rid of, I wanna delete this and maybe um, in here, I don't want any filler here. So I want no fill there. So now I just want it all white. Um, I might say I wanna change this and because I find this important, I want to put in a filler here and I want to say, okay, I want this particular color. I just happen to like the light um, orange for that. And um, it may be something that's a pretty important field. So I can do a lot of different things with formatting here. I can see that I'm wasting a lot of space with my student information. That's column A. So as soon as I click on this and get this um, sort of um, left to right arrow, I can click and drag and I can make it a specific size. Um, I can say for these here, I would like to say for C, I'm clicking and dragging here through L, I want them to be a little bit tighter and I want them to be smaller. If I click and drag, and now that I have more than one and I click and drag it just a little bit, every single one of them just got a little bit smaller. If I say I just want it to fit things in there perfectly and make it as small as possible, I'm going to go here and get that double like left to right arrow again, and I can double click. And now it makes it just the smallest width of any single one of the columns here. And I might say, OK, uh, yeah, I like that. It's a little small. So I might say I just want a little bit of extra space. And now I've gotten them. Anytime you highlight things and do the um, change the spacing or change the size of things, it will do it for everything that you have highlighted. So the same thing would happen over here. If I have correct answer frequency and I want that to be really visible, I can click and I can make this bigger and so that that's bigger. I can also do the same thing. I'm clicking and dragging on the student information. And I could say, I actually want to be able to see it just a little bit better. So I'm making them all a little bit bigger. I have a lot of students that probably wouldn't want to make them too big because, again, if I go to file and print or control P, I can see, like, I just want to be careful. I didn't, I didn't make it so big that it's on a different page. So that's great. Um, and then I just escape right out of there or cancel out of there. Some things that I also um, like to do here um, for formatting purposes is I do like to be able to have the cells highlighted. So I also like this um, total items here. I like it to be in the center. There's this little merge and center thing that um, you can use if it's under more than one um, specific column, but right here, I'm just going to choose um, interesting. It undid my merge and center, merge and center. And so now it's in the middle. Um, so you highlight what you wanted. Same thing with this. Like if I want my, the name of my assessment to be in the middle and I don't want it to be all the way over to the side, I can click and drag to L because that's going to be probably the width of my page. And I can choose this. You have the you have a couple of different options here. Um, you can just merge it and not center it um, and keep it to the left. But I would say merge and center. And then now the name of my spreadsheet um, that I have here is there. I can click and drag this. The cool thing um, with Excel too is I not only have left to right um, functionality of saying where I want things, but if I wanted every single thing on my spreadsheet to be in the middle of the cell, I would click this middle alignment and it makes it so much cleaner so that everything is kind of centered in there. It's not top, um, you know, to, um, justified. It's not, you know, bottom justified. It's in the middle. Also with these here, with um, basically with all of these columns here, I like them to be centered like this. That's just my own personal preference. And then I have to go back here and I say, actually, I want all of these right justified so that I can see them there.
This, I might say, I want to take um, this particular information and I don't want any shading. So I have no fill here. And then I can click and drag here. I mean, any way that you want it formatted. And I can say, I like to have um, the borders on this. So I would say all borders. So now you can see that I've got all my borders here. Um, probably would take this out. I would like my borders on my student names. And so I can click on the border there. So now I've got it kind of looking the way that I would like it. Other things that people like to do with this, um, and anytime you have information for students, is it's sometimes nice to be um, going through and saying, I actually want to sort this to have the student who scored either the highest or the lowest up at the top all the way down um, or vice versa. So if I click on this here and I say, I can actually go up to the top and I can choose data and I can say um, that I would like to sort the data. So you click sort. There's also um, a, a sort over here so the same button is right here. So I can say sort smallest to largest, largest to smallest. So I'm gonna say do that. Cancel. This is just telling me, I'm gonna highlight. It's interesting, I wanna, I wanna show you a couple different um, things here. There's some merged cells in there, so um, I think I had correct answer frequency put in there. So if I do this and I say sort smallest to largest, I can it says expand selection and I'm gonna say sort. Oh. And do it the way I usually do it. I'm going here, I'm going up to the top, data sort. I wanna say that I wanna sort by column B. So A to Z, and I want to sort A to Z. It says values here. I don't want, I want um, off of correct answer frequency. Mm. Mm. If I need some trouble. Sorry, data, sort. I'm gonna go to options. Marissa, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Have I lost my mind? Is it just? I, I do not think so. Okay. There we go. All right, I just needed to select what was there and it automatically pulls in like the student names. It keeps all the rows together. So let me show you what I did there again. So I just selected these here all the way down to the bottom. And then I was able to choose sort, smallest. <laughs> And no, I want to expand the selection and then sort. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? <laughs> oh, so sorry. Sort. Something weird is happening. <laughs> I'm going to do it this way. Sort. What is happening? You should be able to sort it. And I got it to work. So now why I don't, I don't know why it's not working. I apologize. But it should seriously be as easy as as doing that. I can also, I should definitely be able to do this 
and say, I want to go to data sort. I want to sort. It's not. That's so weird. Oh, no, that's right. Data sort smallest to largest and say, okay, but why it's not doing that 50%, something weird is happening with this. So it should be all in order, but um, yeah, that that's basically what I have there. And then to print control P or print, and then it will give you that. If you wanted to see the print preview, you could see here, this is showing um, the, um, Actually, this is the print preview. If you wanted to see where the um, page breaks are and everything, you can see it here. So it will tell you where it is. This one here is just showing you the different spreadsheets. Sometimes every once in a while, your um, Excel will wanna print these little grid lines. So if I go to print, um, there's a couple of different things that um, you can change um, the presets and default settings. Um, are, are what I have, but um, every once in a while, specifically if you're in Google, um, you want to say print without the grid lines uh, um, and um, all should be well. Okay, I'm going to move on from here because we have just a few more minutes and I want to just get to some of the um, quick little things in here um, that um, for printing. So we want to make sure that we're looking at your active sheets. You want to make sure you're printing it either landscape or portrait, however you would like to. Um, I want to get into the Excel commands and just review here. So I was telling you about those control keys, or again, if you use a Mac, you have that command key. There's a lot of different things um, for selecting all is control A, print, control P. I always use control C um, and control V for copy and paste or cut and paste control X. Um, this paste special, sometimes you wanna take information from one place and paste it in without any sort of formatting. So it allows you to place, put things in like values only, um, paste without formatting, paste with formatting, paste formatting only, those types of things are the paste special ones that you see here. Sometimes you have so much data, you want to find something so that control F will allow you to find things. Bold, italics, underline, undo. All of these, by the way, are um, the exact same in, um, in you know, um, Google Sheets and um, Microsoft Word and um, Google Docs. So you've got all of these um, commands that you can use. I put in some just um, regular formulas that you might be using. We used average today and we used sum. The sum that we were doing was a span of cells, but you could choose to just sum specific cells and you just put commas in between them here. This is if you wanna multiply things, so you can multiply. Um, the count if, so sometimes you have, you only wanna count it if you know, there are twos in there. You want to see the percentage or the number of kids who got twos compared to ones compared to zeros. This count if, it's really helpful specifically if you have a rubric and kids are scoring a one, a two, or a three, or a four, you can do this count if and um, create um, different columns um, or different rows to say, okay, here's, I have 10 students who got a three, I had two students who got a two, 10 who got a one um, and so on and so forth. So you can do a couple of the count or count if statements as well. I'm just gonna leave that open for q and I so apologize for the sorting and what's going on um, with the um, spreadsheet there. All of the information, um, just so that you know what you're going to get tomorrow, is going to be this um, formatting your Excel. You've got the um, Excel um, and the PowerPoint, the Google Slides here. The data files here are um, what we have um, for this formatted. So the cool thing here is, is that you've got this, and then this has the formulas in there. So if you're ever like, what in the world did she do? This has already got the formulas in it. Um, 
And so um, that's something um, that you can always refer back to. Um, and then it's interesting. So if I wanted to do a count if here, so I just wanted to show you that count if, and then um, it were a two, um, I believe, and then I can click and drag here. I need to be able to do that. Um, this is, the, it's exactly what we do when we do any sort of uh, range or a number. So um, count if, boy, I'm rusty today. So this is equals count if any of these. Two. And so there's 10 kids who got a two. And so what I can do is I can take this and I can also say count if any of those are a one or a zero. And you can see how many kids score the total number of points compared to um, a single point or no points. So I know we're over, but I just wanted to show you that count. And here's our general information. If you have any information about and you're trying to sort, you're trying to do any of this, please reach out to us. Um, and we thank you for having um, the time with us today. Take care.